I had a feeling that Morbius was going to flop, but I didn't think that it was going to be so bad. That's it. That's my intro. Hi, I'm Amanda. You're watching Swell Entertainment. And today I am talking about uh, the new superhero property from Sony in collaboration with Marvel, Morbius, starring Jared Leto. Personally, Spider-Man has a special place in my heart. He probably always will, the character of Spider-Man. Sam Raimi's Spider-Man was the very first movie I ever saw in theaters with my dad when I was a literal three-year-old. And uh, when I found out I had dyslexia, one of the ways that I really got excited about reading was reading comic books, specifically Spider-Man comic books. So the character is always gonna have a special place in my heart. However, I am not familiar with the character slash villain Morbius. I don't know why, I'm just not. Clarification on who the character of Morbius is in the comic books, this is from uh, Wikipedia. Morbius the living vampire. Apparently IGN uh, ranked him as Spider-Man's 19th greatest villain. After five, I don't think it matters. Yeah, you're just in the cabal of things that I have to deal with. You know, like that's 19th. <laughs> Is that even relevant? I don't personally like to talk about Marvel movies in videos anymore for the same reason that I don't like talking about Star Wars, even though I like movies from both properties. Um, the fans can be crazy and I like feeling safe in my own home. I know it's a crazy concept, but I don't feel like getting death threats over talking about the Pew Pew movies or the uh, Laser Sword movies. Everyone can take what they want from these movies. You can, hell, you can like Morbius. My understanding is that no one liked this movie, those who have seen it. Um, I'm gonna be honest, five people were in the theater with me. Three of those people were 12 year olds. And they were sitting directly in front of me and they were kind of fun. Um, five minutes into the movie, one of them said, why is the story bad already? To the other one, one of them did not recognize the vulture at the end. Like he was like, no, who is that guy? At the time of me recording this, it is still opening weekend. So we don't have the numbers yet. Honestly, I'm both surprised and not surprised. I honestly was kind of hoping that this was gonna be like Venom. Venom was not great but I had fun watching it. And that's the important bit. See, that's your movie doesn't have to be good. I just have to enjoy myself. I have to have fun. It can be fun bad. Like I, I liked Venom more than I liked Venom Let There Be Carnage. Venom Let There Be Carnage, there were moments in it that I really liked and I adored. I just don't think there was enough carnage in it for it to be called Let There Be Carnage. I did not have a good time watching Morbius and I tried. I was like, this could be interesting. And I just, I didn't. I went in an op with an open mind. And a lot of people were like, but I like vampire stuff. When I was talking about it, I agree. Um, I recently started watching True Blood all the way through uh, recently. I stopped after I got, I got to season five and I was like, this is stupid now. Um, but I really have been interested in the recent concept of modern vampires and how that looks with social media, just day-to-day -day life, you know, global warming. I don't know. I think it's interesting. I think modern fantasy is something that's not played around with enough. And so a vampire movie in modern day is fun to me. So I was like, this could be interesting. Something that I thought was interesting was a lot of the lines that were in the trailer were cut from the movie, which is not uncommon in these movies. I once had a mass media professor who said that uh, movies are made to make trailers and the trailers then sell the movie. Like the, the which I personally disagree with, but with comic book movies, I think that is the case where they kind of are like, okay, how can we make the trailer? A lot of what was in the trailer was kind of cut out or changed for the movie and not in an end game way, or, um, you know, Infinity War way where it's like, don't spoil the end game, that whole bullshit. But the lines that were in the trailer made more sense when I put them into the movie. Scenes where there could have, they definitely could have benefited from dialogue just was not there. Okay, should I just start talking about the plot of this movie? Because it, it's a mess. The opening scene with him coming off the helicopter and using the trap to get the bats, apparently one drop of blood calls to thousands of vampire bats. They said the word trap and I still like wasn't understanding what was happening because the trap doesn't make a whole lot of sense based on what I saw. So he catches the bats and then it goes back to 25 years earlier with him in a hospital orphanage style place uh, for his blood disease where he meets Lucian who is then from then on called Milo. Lucian slash Milo is his surrogate brother slash lifelong friend. Jared Leto really gave Michael nothing. 
nothing. Nothing was gained from Jared Leto portraying this character. I'm going to be honest. I am not a big fan of Jared Leto in general, his acting styles. I'm going to be honest. I don't think he's the genius that Hollywood makes him out to be. But also this Michael Morbius had nothing going for it. Um, you can say everything you want about Marvel characters. You have every right to dislike them for whatever reason. Personally, I like the movies because of the characters that I've grown attached to because I'm familiar with the characters. I also acknowledge, I've said multiple times, it's the group project from hell and characterization is the most fucked with every single time. That being said, there was nothing for me to grab onto with Morbius. The moment that we're supposed to be believe that Morbius is like this genius child or something is when Lucian's dialysis machine or blood pump machine, I'm assuming it's dialysis machine, is pumping and something goes wrong, it starts beeping and Lucian loses consciousness or Milo loses consciousness. And M Michael yells for help, no one comes. Why they're not monitoring these children getting dialysis done, who knows? A lot of authority figures in this movie are idiots. Um, we'll talk about the cops, agents, investigators. I don't know, they're stupid. We'll talk about them in a minute, but no one's watching these kids, the machine fails. Michael unhooks himself runs over, uses a pen to check because he just assumed that the battery was dying or something and replaces it with a, a spring from a pen. And apparently the doctor, the head doctor of this facility is like, you're so smart. You, you fixed this machine with a pen that a team of scientists built. There's this school for gifted children. Why do we need that? Why can't you just show that he's smart? Why do we have to see him being smart as a child? Like he has innate gifts. And also that doesn't show that he is a smart medically, medically, like that he has <laughs> knowledge of biology or the human body or anything. It shows that he has like potentially abilities in engineering. I don't know. Like that's not, you know, like the what they show us does not show that he's smart enough to be like a doctor now, you know? Like it'd be funnier if he was just in college and was like, I'm tired of fucking dying. I'm gonna go to medical school. Like that'd be funnier to me. Like that would be better in my opinion. And not that it needs to be funny because I know that that's always the criticism of non-Marvel movies or whatever, where people are like, but it's not funny. I didn't need this movie to be funny. This movie should have been an all out horror film. It should not have been a superhero movie in my opinion. That's, I like to say how I would fix these movies. You should have made it a horror movie through and through. It doesn't even seem like they're really interested in making a vampire movie because there are certain things that would fit with what we are shown, but they don't want to go full vampire, even though he is the living vampire, you know? Like they, this movie drives me crazy a little bit. The more I think about it, the worse it gets, which you never really want. Basically, we then cut to Michael Morbius receiving the Nobel Prize, I believe. He made True Blood, like from True Blood. He made synthetic blood. Um, it's blue for some reason, but it's blue. It looks like G Fuel. And he's supposed to go and receive the award. And then we cut to a little girl with his same condition in bed that he is helping. She's like, how did you snub everyone or whatever? Like we don't see him snub someone, but this is supposed to be like a big deal. Like his science that he is being rewarded for is not the science that he wants. Like it didn't achieve the result that he wanted. And so he denies the prize when he could have done that beforehand. I don't know why you would wait till you were on stage to do that. Um, you could have just denied it earlier on, but it like, it's, I think it's supposed to show that like he's there for the science and he's not there for the accolades. But there was so many better ways to do that in my opinion, but whatever. Martine is his doctor colleague. Basically his whole thing is that because the vampire bats, get, trust, stop me if I get this wrong. The vampire bats, are the only beings on earth that have lived to survive on blood. And so they have something in their bodies that acts as an anticoagulant so that they can safely ingest it. And he believes that this is the cure to his and Milo's blood disease because it'll help their blood work better. I don't fucking know. It wasn't done well. Cut to Milo, who is uh, still going by Milo again, would you not have resentment for someone who gave you a new name? I would be mad. <laughs> if you started calling me Cassie when my name is Amanda, I'd be pissed at you. <laughs> like, I, we're not friends now, the end. He kind of treats him like a puppy, and so I think that's what they're trying to go with. Like, yeah, you, he named this kid who was younger than him. He gave him a new name because he's like a puppy to him. Like, this is like a pet, like a child, like as a joke. Again, I don't know where they were going with his character, 
because I really don't get a sense of who Michael Morbius is, vampire or not. He is a doctor. Okay, he has a blood disease. Okay, that's really the only through lines that we got. And so originally the story kind of started to be how far should science go before we are crossing a line? How far is too far? That's where it seemed, but then it seemed like because a lot of these movies need a clear cut bad guy, that they turned it into, okay, we need a real villain because this villain, the one we're making the movie about, it's not working. That's where they have Milo become the clear cut villain. But Milo's more fun. Like I would have rather the whole movie be about him. Matt Smith carried this movie on his back. Goes to Milo and he's like, here's what we gotta do, it's illegal. We gotta do it in uh, international waters so that if we get caught, we're not arrested. Basically he does the test on the rat or the mouse, and it works, the mouse lives. So he's like, oh cool, we can now do human trials. <laughs> and so they go, they get like a tanker with mercenaries to do the lab in this facility. They do a spinal tap injection on Morbius, strap him down, and then one of the mercenaries goes and checks on them to be a dick and just, as far as they know, these are the two people who are paying them, even though there is a benefactor, I think Milo. And so I don't know why he's being a creepy dick to her, but I think these movies need a woman to be in an uncomfortable position. I don't fucking know, uh, but that's what was happening. And so he's like, you're just the help like me. What the, f who are you? Fires off some one-liners that weren't good about like how he's dumb or something. I don't know. She is a doctor. She has every right to do that in my opinion. But Morbius is suddenly out of his restraints and starts backing up. This guy has a gun because of course he does. They both go inside the, the chamber. Morbius kills the one guy. Martine runs out and shuts the door. Morbius breaks through. The other mercs are in there and the, one of them shoves her. She hits her head, she's down. Morbius to some degree has control because he notices to not kill Martine. He has control the entire time despite what happens the rest of the movie. They keep saying like, I lose control. No, you were hungry and you killed the people that you had no emotional connection to, which is dangerous, yes, but you, you clearly noticed Martine and you actively cared for her in those moments and then fled after sending out a mayday call to get her help. Like you, there, there is control there even if you were starving before five minutes ago, you know, like there's, Anyway, he kills all the mercenaries. We get this really cool shot that I wanted more of. They, they kept, they did this POV shot as he's killing all the mercenaries on the ship of him going through like vampire POV. Like it was cool. Why couldn't we have more of that? I like in horror movies when they swap POVs and do cool things like that. Cause it adds a sense of, oh fuck, it's coming. Like it's the kind of the dramatic irony and the fear that can be created with dramatic irony. You know, like don't go in there. There's someone in there. The audience knows that the characters don't, you know, like there's something there. They just never do that again. Not once. He then sends out a mayday call for Martine after like putting a blanket over her, even though she like hit her head and probably has a concussion and might die. I don't know. She probably shouldn't still be unconscious. She should try and wake her up. He then goes on the run. This was a secret mission though. He like left a note or something. He left a bat. He gave her a bat thing before the transformation. Like in case I die, here you go. Cause he kept doing bat origami throughout the movie. These two investigators get brought on. Um, they are the stupidest people on the planet. Both of them, but specifically the one guy, I don't know his name, the guy in glasses, he was really stupid. They do the investigation of the boat. They find uh, one woman, she's unconscious. They go and talk to her after she's finally woken up from her coma that she's been in. Um, from the head trauma. Morbius had gone to visit her, all this stuff, but they're like interrogating her. As far as you know, she is a victim in this moment. You know, like you don't, like you can argue like, oh yes, one survivor, blah, blah. Someone sent out a mayday call, a man. Why are they interrogating her? Like she's not a victim in this, at least with all the knowledge that you have, she is the victim right now. She is a victim just cause she's the only one alive. She was still unconscious and clearly in danger when this all happened and you know for a fact that the Mayday call was from a man. Why are you interrogating her like she's hiding something? She is, but like, that's not the point. They wouldn't know that, okay? Like they're, you're just bad at your job. Morbius then goes back to his lab. Why no one checks that? Um, but then they, they both think that it's Morbius. They somehow guess that it's Morbius, but then they also have no reason to know that it's Morbius other than the fact that Martine was his partner. And then they find the bat thing and they're like, oh yes, Michael Morbius, what the fuck? But he starts realizing like, okay, I need to consume human blood. So he keeps drinking the synthetic blood, but he obviously has a bunch of real samples of 
living blood. He keeps stopping himself from drinking the red blood. They never say why. This is where, again, they're not sure how vampire they wanna go with their living vampire movie. At a certain point, they even stop saying blood. Like they just keep saying, drink the blue, not the red. I can't drink the red. Was there a, a word count? Hey, there's an unlimited amount of times you can say blood in relation to consumption in this movie for us to keep our rating. Is that what it is? He's timing himself drinking the blue. The reason, my understanding with just understanding of vampire lore, the thing about blood is that it's the essence of life. Like that's the whole thing. They need to drink the essence of life to sustain themselves for their immortal undead life. That's why they need blood. The artificial blood will kind of like, it'll do it, but it's not ideal. Hence true blood, hence all of that, okay? So that's why event it's working for less and less time because his body is acknowledging, okay, this is not working. I need real human blood. It's, it's not really clear why he is an issue. I'm assuming it because he thinks that it's like a slippery slope into losing control or he's gonna turn into a monster the way that he was on the ship. He was a monster because he was hungry. Once he was done, he was able to care for Martine. He was able to save, do off the Mayday call. He was able to take the thought of, I need to get off this ship away from these bodies. It just doesn't really make a whole lot of sense there. He kept locking himself in this chamber as he was running closer to the countdown of the timer for when he would need blood again. And why he wouldn't keep stock of the blue blood in that room, I don't know. Cause the blue blood is in the same room as the red blood. So if he gets hungry enough, he's gonna make the wrong choice. Why are you edging yourself like that? It was stupid. Anyway, Milo comes down and is like, oh, there are you, where Where have you been? I, I'm, I knew you were alive, like that type of thing. What do you need? What's wrong? What do I do? And then he spells out blood in his own blood? When was he bleeding? I don't know why he had blood on his hands suddenly. I don't know. Um, Milo gets him the blue blood. Like, you did it, you look great, you look amazing, you're you're healthy. Give it. Give me the antidote, let's go. Like, let's do it, because Milo is dying from the same thing. Then we find Morbius is like, no, I can't. It makes you a monster, you lose control. This is a curse. This is, a, what? Tell us more, excuse me, why did he? I think this was done so, I, I honestly, how I would fix this movie? Start over, scrap it all. Let's do this again. Cause this is stupid. Milo is understandably upset, storms out, but he, at some point he grabs one of the vials. Milo kills a nurse, but we think it's uh, Morbius cause we don't see who kills her. Morbius is like, I think it was like, even Morbius thinks, see the thing is too, is it's like they were trying to make it seem like Morbius is blacking out, but they, they don't do that. There was no indication that he was blacking out. So there's no reason for him to think that he was the one that killed the nurse that he worked with. The cops go there because they're looking for Michael Morbius after talking to Martine. And these two are stupid. These guys are way too chill with like, does that look like bite marks on those uh, neck to you? They're way cool, too cool about that. It's just way too, ca like they just assume that it's bite marks and not injection ports, nothing. They're just like, yeah, that looks like bite marks from a human mouth. And then we see his teeth. He doesn't really have even like clear cut fangs, but these cops don't identify themselves or show badges. I would assume you're a fake cop. I would assume you're not really law enforcement. I would assume I'm about to be human trafficked or abducted. Like that's what I would assume is happening, but that's just me being a tiny woman and not trusting people, you know, <laughs> like that's would probably be me, but like, this was just stupid. And then they're like interrogating him. And then they get word about a dead body missing blood in the facility. And one of the cops is like, okay, you're coming with us. And like goes, the dumb one goes to grab his arms. He dropped the bag of blood cause he had a backpack full of the artificial blood so he could run and hide from them. But they catch him, obviously he gets under arrest. And then I'm assuming more than six hours have passed. Um, this is where that clip is going viral um, for, look how bad it is. I agree with some of the criticism that's like, this isn't, this is like not outside the humor of these types of movies. I don't know why people are acting like this is super bad. The line itself is not that bad. The I'm getting hungry, you wouldn't like me when I'm hungry. It's the same thing of like, I'm always angry. You know, that type of vibe. I don't think the line itself is bad. The movie as a whole is not good. And that line would fit better if they went full vampire, you know, because even he won't admit that he's full vampire, you know? And it's not even like he's getting hungry. They're depicting it as he's getting growing weak. Like his leg, he's losing control of his limbs, his legs specifically, the way he did when he needed the crutches to walk. He says that his illness comes back with a vengeance. It's not hunger that's being depicted, his illness is not gone, it's just at bay. He's treating the symptom. He's not eradicating the illness, you know? And so the hungry line does not fit with what we were given. But yeah, the cops are interrogating him. He says that he drops, like they, he needs the blood 
uh, that they dropped. And it implies that it's been less than six hours since he was arrested, but the timing was just really weird. Again, continuity, uh, pacing issues. It doesn't make sense. They're interrogating him. They accuse him of murdering everyone on the boat, which he did, and then murdering the nurse. And it seems like he thinks that he did it, but there's no reason for other than like the fact that we were not shown who is the one who murdered uh, the nurse. We have no reason to believe that it's really him. Milo comes in, says that he's his lawyer and he's using his cane and uh, is like, no, this will be fine. We can fight this. We can handle this. We can handle, like we can make, they were, they were mercenaries. We can make that go away. You know, he's a rich dude. He's like, we, they're, they're dead people. They're, they're bad guys. That's, that's like a good murder. We don't have to worry about that. It's fine. That type of thing. And uh, he's like, no, no, no. I killed the nurse. I, I should be in here. I'm going to, um, anyway, it's like, okay, time's up. Milo goes to leave and he's like, hey, something to get you through and drops a packet of red blood behind him. The guards would see that shit. There's literally one standing there walking, looking in. It's not like he dropped it behind something. He very clearly, like, something to get you through. They would see that, uh, but he also leaves his cane behind. So as he's walking, he's kind of struggling. And then he walks out very calmly and Morbius realizes that Milo took the one of the other vials and is now a vampire as well and gives him red blood. And I thought originally that he drank the red blood to get through what he's about to do, but he didn't. He did not drink the red blood in the cell. He just starts busting his way out of the cell from rage, despite the fact that he is starving, he would need blood at this point, basically. He already is like fidgety and like, I need something, I need blood, whatever. Again, just go full vampire, commit to the bit. They didn't really know what they wanted to do with this movie, I do think. Morbius jumps out, jumps and stops him. They start fighting. Milo kills several people in front of him and he's like, you know, I've been, I've been fearing death my whole life. I've been in the process of dying my whole life. Now it's their turn to fear death, you know? And he, just, he does it by killing them. Oh yeah, Milo admits he's the one that murdered the nurse to like show Morbius who he actually is. Like, you know, you, this is who you need to be. You need to be the 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 killer. I'm gonna skip ahead because there's all the stuff with Martine back and forth. There's this whole point where uh, Martine and Morbius meet up. Martine is being followed by the dumb cop. She loses him very quickly um, because common sense and he's an idiot. Then Morbius is just on the bus with her and they go and get coffee or whatever. And Morbius uses his bat radar at one point to hear Mal from Shadow and Bone and some other kid talking uh, with a woman about paying in fake hundreds and then getting back to a lab. Listen, I'm not in involved in the criminal underworld. <laughs> I'm not fun enough to do that. But um, as someone who has dealt with counterfeit money um, in her work when I was in retail a lot, uh, especially the pen checker hundreds and things like that, I have seen some really bad fake bills um, and I've seen some very good ones. The type of people who professionally print money the way that these guys were to the point that they had a lab are not dumb enough to talk about it openly in front of a cashier at a diner and also be like, there's more where that comes from if you just let this slide. Like there, it's not like that. I don't know, it was just stupid. Anyway, Morbius hears that and follows and just takes over their lab. You could have just had the Ninja Turtles pop up and use Donatello's laboratory. And I would have been like, yeah, that makes more sense. He asked Martine to get her some, to get him stuff from the lab and warns her that Milo is dangerous. Milo is at, shows up at the lab, cut back to the cops. Sorry, the stupidest moment. These cops, okay, I have had cats. They react to you cleaning out their litter box because they know that that's where they go potty. It's like if someone walked in and was fucking with my toilet, I'd be like, what the fuck are you doing? You know, that's what a cat does. But these guys are investigating Martine's apartment looking for her and they realize the cat's gone because the dumb cop, this dumb of dumber, you know, um, shakes the kitty litter and goes, here, kitty, kitty. And the cat doesn't come out. And they're like, cat's gone. At one point, they make it sound like it's been a long time since uh, they were on the boat, but Morbius makes it say, it says at one point, like it's a weird week. It's been a weird week. So it's like, okay, has it really been a week since you guys went on the ship? Like has it, it, with what we're shown, it would make sense if that's the case, but also Martine should still be having some difficulties, a headache. I don't know from being whacked on a head and then basically being in a coma. She's completely has no problem moving around and all this stuff. They make an antidote, which is basically just a lethal 
injection for uh, Milo and there's a second one and she's like, no. And he's like, I'm losing, I'm running out of time for how long blue blood works. Eventually I'll have to drink red. And she's like, so you're just gonna inject yourself with poison? He's like, there's no other option. Anyway, she leaves the lab um, and Morbius is looking for Milo, but uh, M Milo found Martine. Oh wow, a lot of M names, I just realized that. <laughs> So he goes up and starts listening and here's uh, Martine and Milo. Milo's like torturing Martine. It's like, call for him, call for him. And she's just like, she's like, no, <laughs> it's so stupid. Michael finds Martine. She's like injured, bleeding. She's basically like, ba she's bait, we knew that. He's like, no, you're dying. And she's like, make it mean something. Like, hey, kill me more. <laughs> drink my blood, just drink red so you're like done. And it seems like it, it's not even like this big, my babysitter's a vampire did it better. They just did, like this is so stupid. He kisses her, bites his lips so he, he bleeds on her and then licks her lips. I'm assuming you were trying to make it intimate because I, I do think there is an intimate nature in general to the vampire thing, especially like giving willingly, but th this was not the dramatic moment that you thought it was. I think they weren't willing to go full sexy vampire. Her dying and then um, there's no more blood on her lips. Like her face is completely clean. He then yells and then drinks her blood and then goes and fights Milo. It's like, you did it, you drank the red. It's treated like he has reached his full form, but he already had, because he did it first, you know? So it's stupid. Um, they fight, he's getting his ass kicked. And then we missed the point. I didn't talk about the part where he steps into the chamber of bats and he's like, they're greeting me like an old friend because we have the same blood or something. I don't fucking know. But there's like a kinship of sorts with the bats. Milo would have the same thing. There's no reason he wouldn't based on what we are shown. Nothing about Morbius is innately more special biologically compared to Lucian Milo at this point, other than the fact that he has in fact worked with the bats. That's it. If anything, the bats would be more pissed off. It's like, hey, you keep killing our brothers because you need their blood, their organs for your shit. Like they would be more pissed at Morbius than anything. He like calls the bats to him when he's injured. And then there is literal bat bending. I'm not kidding. Like they're surrounding him and he goes, Hermes was looking at me like I'm crazy because I am. Milo is like pinned down and he gets him with the injection and kills him. And it's supposed to be this dramatic moment. It's like, why are you killing me? Like, what are you doing? And it's just as Matt Smith is trying, it's not working. Cuts to Martine's eyes opening up. She is now also a vampire, I'm assuming. Fade to black, credits roll. We get the first scene. Vulture from Spider-Man Homecoming because of the spell at the end of Spider-Man no way home. He's there. Kind of like how Venom was in that timeline for like a minute. For some reason, he is not sent back to his timeline. They just retry him for crimes that aren't even existing in that universe. So he's released. Morbius got a call from him and drove to the middle of nowhere. And then Vulture shows up in the Vulture suit. Somehow he got it, made it, even though the Vulture suit was basically made from tech that was salvaged from the Battle of New York which did not happen in the Morbius universe, the multiverse timeline for that. So why he would have that at all, I don't know. And it's like, hey, I think there's more people like us. We can do some good meet up. Doesn't make sense, um, especially with the, the Morbius character that we were given. It doesn't make sense. And I think this is the problem with a lot of Sony uh, properties with the Spider-Man stuff, like the same thing with Venom um, that a lot of people are saying. It's like, I can't see how this Venom is going to be like a villain with Marvel's Sony Spider-Man, Tom Holland Spider-Man, with what we're given. The same thing goes with Morbius. Like they were trying to get to an end point that I don't even think they knew what they were getting to. Anyway, the movie's not good. I did not like it at all. I know this review is all over the place, but that's like literally the best I can do. The way I would fix this movie is starting from scratch, really. Getting more clear on what uh, we are comfortable with making him a vampire and the terminology that we are comfortable with associated with him. And then also just making it a clear cut horror movie, I think would have been best. And that's gonna be it. Um, how would you make this movie better? Were you familiar with the character of Morbius before the trailer slash the movie came out? Let me know. Comment down below. Reminder, I have a podcast, The Swell Shenanigans Podcast, new episodes every Wednesday. Reminder, I have merch like that mug back there. Uh, shout out to my patrons. Thank you so much for supporting me on Patreon. If you'd also like to support me on Patreon, I'll be listed down below. Like to follow me on my social media. That'll be all up here. And that's going to be it. Have a lovely day. Goodbye. Goodbye. 
I, I just really don't think that they knew what to do with the character of Morbius. Like I, I'm again, I'm not familiar with the the comic book, so I don't know what he's like in comic version. But in the movie, there was just no clear cut characterization where I'm like, oh yes, we get something from him being a character in this universe, you know? Thank you, Adri, Alan, Cameron, Christopher, Chris, Cody, Crash, PC, China, Devin, Dirty One, Don, Elliot, Evan, Feckles, Hopeless, Incognito, Jack Ray, Joe, John M, Joe, Jordan, Joseph, Kenny, Kim, Kristen, Lamb, Lex, Lisa, Luis, Matt, Matt O, Matthew S, Meme Lord, Michael, Michael J, Micah, Nathan, Nathaniel, Pat, Penn, Richard, Rob, Red, Robert, Ross, Sam, Serena, Skylar, Simon, Tasha, the Tom, Wendy, William, Winters, Zendry's Wink.